好，谢谢大家的参与，我们开始下一个议程。呃，这个议程是由来自缅甸的丁周印为我们带来的主题演讲，他会讲的是关于缅甸的公民科技现状。那我们知道，缅甸在二零一二年的国会改选之后，啊、呃。啊、呃，在政治的制度上看起来是比较民主化了，但是从二零一二年在 Open Myanmar Initiative， 就是开放缅甸倡议这个组织，啊、呃，长从二零一二年开始投入做国会开放资讯之后，呃，听嘉应在里面工作了几年，并且啊、呃，看到了一些当地的呃开放资料依然有值得有可以改进的地方。那他现在已经不在 OMI 工作了，他现在做自己的呃 data analysis 的公司，所以我们啊、呃、来听听看他这几年在缅甸投入开放国会资料的时候所呃所得到的经验。那我们欢迎听来带来他的演讲。Hello everyone， 你好。Uh, thank you, thank you for having me here. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here and share the experience we have with Civitech in Myanmar, and listen to the very inspiring stories and be the part of this amazing Gulf Zero family and community. I was really inspired by you guys here in Taiwan. So, I would like to share. A few experiences we had with Civitech in the past five years in Myanmar, and with democracy. Uh, sorry. In Myanmar, we used to talk about the legal data and information. We used to talk about the legal government information. Most of the time, we found ourselves we don't have enough government information. We don't have. Enough government data, and when we talk about civic technology, we started. We mostly started our conversation with talk about the government data, and we don't. We found out that we don't have enough of them. I'm not going to argue against it. So I'm not going to argue that we have very much. Government data. We have enough government data to do civic technology and civic tech projects, to start civic tech projects in Myanmar. But I am going to, I would like to rethink it again about the government data. It's not always true that we don't have the government data and we don't have the government information to do to use the technology solve the political and civic problems.、Uh, putting it strictly. It's mostly like it's、uh, the legal structure information and the ways of government information in records, in files of books, records, documents, and papers. By files of books, I really meant it literally. These are the files of books.、Uh, these are the records of the parliament in Myanmar for two years. So what I show in the red. Rutenge is a record of three chambers of parliament in Myanmar for one year. For each day of for each day of the parliament, there are between 70 and 200 pages of transcripts, 200 pages of everything that that talk that politicians talk in parliament. But who read all of them to question、uh, to? Look at the performance of the MPs in the par parliament, and decide whether they will re-elect re this MP in next election or not, or track things that is happening in the parliament that matters to the life. These information, these books and records are available to public, but it's not. Free. You have to go to the government bookstore and buy the books, and it's not very cheap. So these are available to public because, in our constitution, it's required that parliament has to public the records of the parliament. They publish they publish them, but it's not available very easily online, 
So practically, it's kind of these informations are available, but not accessible to public. Now, more and more, government, uh, more, and more parliamentary records are now available online, but in PDF, which is scan PDF, so you, don't, you can scrape, you can do anything with it. So it's like the laws of, the laws of parliament, waste of the information, waste of the parliamentary information in these records. These records then doesn't become the knowledge that helps the citizen uh, make the most democratic decisions in the political life. These records doesn't become the knowledge that helps the citizen offer the inputs in the political decisions that the politicians are making. These reports doesn't become the tool. These records doesn't become the tools that help uh, the citizen bring the MPs accountable. So we all think we all think that civic tech civic technology is cool because we can make these records, these government records, into meaningful information and data for the citizens. Yes, yeah, it's really cool, but it also has its own challenges as well. So we, do we have necessary resources to make, there are a lot of questions. Do we have necessary resources to make this information, to digitize this information for the citizen? And are we sure that this information will be, will have impacts in the, in the lives of the citizens? And how do we make sense of them? Can we also keep up with the amount of, the amount of data the parliament and the government is producing through its day-to-day -day businesses? And also, are we sure that this information will necessarily create impacts? We also have a lot of uncertainties. And it, all, it also requires a lot of efforts and human resources to digitize all this information through manual data entries. And it is, is it worth our time center for? Is it efficient? And also, it's, is it meaningful? The most difficult part of civic tech, at least in my experience, is to keep consistent with what you are doing. Because it requires a lot of manual works. It requires deep, uh, it requires deep understanding into the area you are working on. It requires a deeper understanding of the problem you are solving. It's not just about an app on a website. It's about different people with different levels of digital literacy, with different opinions. If you're not committed to making, making long-term changes, making long-term impacts in the area you are working on, without keeping yourself with the challenges and engaging and addressing them, your ideas will likely to end up in short lived fantasies. You're not going to bring changes with, with, with just one app. That would take time for sure. And that would take a lot of thoughts from different people, from different areas behind the app. I would like to present some, uh, some examples we have done in the past in Myanmar. But most of these examples are like uh, success stories, but believe me, there are many more failures we have faced. Let's take Mebizu as an example. Mebizu Lex vote. It's the most successful civic tech movement, one of the most successful civic tech movements in Myanmar. Back in 2015, we have a general elections. In the run-up to general election, there are numbers of international organizations that are pushing and helping the uh, electoral commission in Myanmar to public to release the candidate information, candidate data. There are also organizations, civil society organizations like 
the ones I, I used to work, Open Myanmar Initiative, that track the performance of MPs in the parliament. There are, uh, there are a number of civil society organizations working on providing uh, voter education to the citizens so that they can vote properly, they can make the right choice. And there's also a great tech community in Myanmar who are really excited with the chance to inform, to better inform the voters uh, about their candidate. We all work together to, with just one goal of helping the voters better understand their candidates and incumbent MPs. So th these are a few numbers of our uh, Let's Vote initiative. So we have, a, we have uh, the ABI, so we have ABI for so, uh, can, electoral candidates, ABI for uh, for the income and performance of income and MP, so ABI for we have API for uh, the voter education. So these uh, these are API calls, numbers of API calls. We have we receive 11.7 million API calls. Those calls uh, these uh, are used by 72 percent of the town. These call came from 72 percent of the townships in Myanmar. So we, we can inform millions of voters before they go to the polling station and decide who will vote in this election. And another great thing with this is we can build, build, build up another great initiative on top of it, which is called Open Lodo. Open Lodo is like open parliament. Uh, this time it's, about, it's not about the parliament uh, electoral candidate, it's about the newly elected MPs. It's about the information of the elected MPs. Uh, talking about Open Lodo, I would like to bring another aspect of civic technology, which is collaboration. Collaboration not just with, among the uh, organization inside your country, but the ones outside the country. We have, at the time, we have the information about the candidates, we have the election results, which means we have uh, the information of the newly elected, MP, uh, newly elected members of parliament. We used to have our own application and website about the parliamentary, uh, parliamentarians' information and biography, but it's not the open data, open data format, and we also have, uh, we also have very limited technical resources to maintain that website. So this time we look out to outside the country as, 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 as a resource, as a hub. We reach out to, to the people outside the country and we are really lucky to, uh, to receive the genius technical, uh, genius technical support from our friends of Sina Project in Malaysia. Sima here, he is the one uh, who has us the most. He built the backend of our, our, this website, which, is sem uh, which they have done something similar in Malaysia, and they built, uh, he took time and built the, built the uh, backend for the website, for this website. Now we have Open the Door, which is uh, which where you can find the information of your MPs. This is, not the only, uh, this is not the only example about the, uh, the collaboration with the people outside the country. There is also another example, which is uh, called Better Dashboard of Myanmar. Uh, the one interesting thing with this, uh, this dashboard is that it's not only the tech people, it also involves other people, other professional like statisticians. So we, uh, no, they, they, this website, this dashboard started with a research project, not, with a CV tech, not as a civic tech project. We had a research project called, uh, for local fiscal administration in Myanmar. So after the research, we have two different data sets of central government budget and also the state and regional government, a sub-national government budget for a number of years, for a few years. So after the research, a researcher who, who, who is a friend of mine thought that it's a pity that we 
didn't use the data anymore after the release of the report. We need to make we need to make these data. We need to make sure that this data is used, reused, and redistributed. So we reach out to the people outside the country again. This time, the ones who have us is a statistician without borders, something like a translator without borders or doubters without borders. So these time, they, they are the volunteer, volunteer statistician that work in U.S. They have us, they, we together build a dashboard, a uh, shiny dashboard, uh, which you see. And we then collect the data of the government budget through a local organization. Now it seems to be run only by, it seems to be uh, maintained only by me, but we require a lot of collaboration still. So, like for the collection of data, we need local organization in different region states to send us the data, to send us budget, budget documents as the parliament approved them. And also we need NGOs, INGOs, and friendly parliamentarians in the parliament to share us the parliament budget documents that can relate to us. And also we need media journalists to and to use, reuse, and understand the budget data so that they can report about the budget proceedings in the parliament. The last one I would like to make is we need to think ourselves simply as service provider. We are providing service, we are providing information, and we are providing data to the citizens as a service. We are, uh, we are helping the citizens to effectively and efficiently talk to power and smart our way. So we need to make sure that these, the services we provide, the information we provide, are useful for citizens to talk to the government, to communicate the government better. So in, uh, since the very beginning, we need to think of ourselves as a service, not as, not as not the ones as producing the ones who are producing just website and app. These, uh, these are uh, the major learnings and major experience that we learned in Myanmar. So thank you very much for your time and attention. We are taking some questions from the floor and from Slido. The Slido event of this talk is 1007R0. Uh, if you have question, you can post it on Slido and vote for the question that you are favor in favor of. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, while we are sorting out the computer problems, I'll read out the first question. Oh, yeah. Uh, the first question on Slido is, are citizens motivated by the information that you have provided, I presume, and in what way? Uh, that's an interesting, interesting question. Because uh, most, uh, mostly we 
we start out with the information we have, and same time we start out with the information we think useful for the citizen. Uh, but we see some uh, cases the citizen respond to these information and data very uh, in a way we didn't even expect it. Like I, I for example, we have uh, in the parliament we have 25% of military MPs. Who, which uh, citizen didn't, most citizen didn't approve of. So we, uh, in, in the first uh, batch of data we, uh, we, pro we produced, uh, we found out that these 25% of the military MPs in the parliament are not doing anything in three years. So citizen um, journalists uh, covered the news very widely and it creates the, uh, it creates a lot of questions among, uh, on, on, on the social media that, uh, that uh, the rules of uh, military MPs in the parliament, uh, why, why are they there, there? So it creates debates. Uh, most of the data we provide did, didn't, create, uh, didn't, create, uh, didn't solve the problem directly, but mostly they create debates on social media. They, they, uh, they serve as a, First, uh, discussion point, uh, setting point for the discussion and debate on the social media. And I think uh, then that's a way. Oh. Sure. Uh, the, second, the second question on Slido is Did any international organization, such as World Bank, involved in the open government movement in Myanmar? And did it help? Yes, sure. Uh, we use uh, international organization, we have the help of this uh, international organization uh, in this open government and open data movement. Like uh, the government suddenly listen more to the international organization than to the local organization. So we need to be uh, we need to be clever in requesting and getting the government and getting the data from the government. Sometimes we need to. Uh, we need to get the data through through the international organization rather than directly getting from the uh, from the government. For example, uh, the ones that I mentioned about uh, uh, with the electoral commissions, it was international organization involved effectively in asking the government, pushing the government to give the data, to release the data, to public the data to the uh, uh, civil society. So I don't know. Uh, in particular about the World Bank, but international organizations are, are, are proving a uh, hub in this uh, open data movement if we use them cleverly. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is also about foreign organizations, is what is your working relationship between you and the foreign organization? Foreign organization, I mean international organization. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. Yeah, I, I work with them quite closely, uh, with some some of them, and I fall sometimes good, sometimes. But it, it's not the same with different organization, different relationship. But you have to. Uh, I think you need to understand what's. What's the agenda of this international organization? What I, agenda, I mean not the negative one, but the ones what they are working on, how, which kind of help they can be to your work. And then if you're clear about this, uh, there's a, that, help us, uh, that helps you to decide how you can relate with them. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, is any Rohingyas group using these tools to, provide to improve their situations? Yeah. I'm not sure I can. Uh, I, I know about this situation really well, but uh, there's a, a community we have in Myanmar. Uh, we, we have a, a translator network, a translator without Bora. So Sam uh, translator are contributing to the materials that the uh, materials that distributed to the, these uh, refugees community. Uh, so, so I don't think they are particularly using these tools, but 
there are some kind of efforts to uh, to translate things for 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 them. Thank you, and I believe due to time, due to our time, this might be the last question. That you mentioned that it's not just the websites. Do you provide? Can you provide some concrete examples? Uh, yeah. So we we have the budget dashboard. So we launched it, but we found we found the uh, the use the targeted user. We would like we would like the budget dashboard to use it at parliamentarians, civil society, and different regional state to engage with the uh, the government or different regional state. So we would like it to make it platform for them to talk to start talking. So, but. I have serious doubt that do they really use them or not. But so we, what we have to do is we do a series of workshops in different region states, bringing together uh, together the civil citizens, civil society groups, and also members of parliaments to start talking about the situation of the budget of uh, the budgeting of their region, their own region state. And we started from the data we have, and started from the information we can provide. And they. Uh, we created a way, we created a way to, uh, to physically engage and to really engage and talk together, talk to each other. Uh, so it's not, I don't think it's with just uh, the website we, we will be able to create this kind of uh, step. I think it needs to be, uh, you need to use a different way to, to create this kind of uh, things. Thank you very much. Uh, let's thank Ting for his talk and also let's welcome our next speaker who is, the ch uh, who is IPA and also the chair of this summit.